joining us now is a man whose mind for basketball is literally world renowned, beloved by everybody, a golf master now when he once wasn't, a man you can see on TNT all NBA season. Wish we would have seen him in the finals, but now we get a chance to chat with him. Hall of Famer, MVP, legend, Sir Charles Barkley. Yeah. What up, Pat? How you doing, brother? I'm so thankful you joined us, man. I know you're very busy. Today has to be a busy day for you, whether it's golfing or talking about basketball. We appreciate the hell out of yeah. you. Hey, man. I ain't been doing shit for like two weeks now. I ain't busy at all. Uh, let's talk no, about... We, you know, we, we were done with the Western Conference Finals. So I have done absolutely nothing but play golf for the last... Since I've been off. But no, I ain't busy at all. I, I just tell people I'm busy because they, they always have a bunch of charity crap they want you to do. So I just lie and tell people I'm busy. <laughs> Rather donate, obviously. Want the world to be a better place, but also the me time is well worth it. You had a hell of an NBA season, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Hell Thank of you. a season by you this year. It ended with you cutting promos over there in San Francisco. Let's dive into this a little bit. Last night, do you think that team is – obviously cemented in dynasty conversation forever and is steph curry worthy of all the convos now about him being mount rushmore and everything did you learn anything through this series about that team or steph or did it kind of end up how you thought chuck well i think a couple of things i think we can uh isaiah thomas can welcome steph curry to his table as the greatest little man to ever played in, uh, in the nba that's just my personal opinion i think that isaiah's been the best little man forever and I think with Steph winning this championship, because you kind of have to handicap those two with Kevin Durant. So you put him with him winning his second, in my opinion, it puts him at the table with Isaiah Thomas as the greatest point guard to ever play the game. And also, I think you got to give Bob Myers, their GM, a lot of credit because, you know, a couple of years ago when they made the Wiggins trade, it was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. It was a head scratcher. And uh, it turned out to be amazing. And also uh, Otto Porter Jr., but the Wiggins trade turned out to be a gold mine. I mean, they gave him up really for nothing. Uh, and, and, they, and, and, and they think about it. Remember, they got Wiseman yes. in that deal. So what's really scary, Pat, with Wiseman, Kumanga, and Poole, this team could go on a real serious run in the next three to five years. Okay, so they were talking last night about how they crashed, basically. They hit rock bottom, and now, you know, there was injuries, and the team was kind of doubted, and a lot of the chatter was, this one's the sweetest because how hard we had to get back to this one. You're talking about the next few years, though, being maybe theirs. Is that something that is, like, a very common conversation? Is everybody expecting this Golden State Warriors just to continue to go, and who can stop them? What can stop them? It feels like Steph can literally, just like this, take over a fucking game. And Klay Thompson, what? He didn't even play that great no. if he gets back yeah. into shape and form he's going to be able to do his thing how can you stop this team and is it basically just them if they don't want to go for however many more rings they want to go for well i think it's really going to depend on the young guys because you know steph is obviously getting older i don't know if clay gonna ever get back to being the best two-way player in the nba i mean that's you know i mean he's back as a player but uh, three or four years ago he was the best two-way player in the league but it's going to come down – what's going to come down to is how many guys are they willing to pay. You saw in the locker room last night, Wiggins and Jordan Poole were talking about, yeah, we're going to get paid now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, they can't pay everybody. They already got three max guys. And what are they willing to pay luxury tax-wise? Pay Wiggins, pay Poole. And like I say, they still got Wiseman and Kumanga. I'm a big who, uh, Jonathan Kaminga fan. I think he's going to be spectacular. We haven't even seen Wiseman in two years. But they still got to pay Poole and Wiggins. So to me, it's going to really come down to dollars, how long they can keep this run going. Why is Steve Kerr 
transition so well into being a coach. Why does it feel like for Wiggins, for instance, this is the best Wiggins has ever been. You, now, do you credit that to the culture, the teammates, the way they go? Or is it Steve Kerr who has found an incredible way to bring out the best in everybody and keep everybody together, even though they have some adversity along the way? What is it about Steve you think that makes him such a good coach, Chuck? Well, I think being around uh, Coach, Coach Popovich was a huge thing for him, Pat. I mean, in my opinion, he you know he's on the Mount Rushmore of uh, coaches, and he knows how to handle people. I mean, Steve probably saw him handle David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Bye. Parker, and Ginobili. So those guys are along the same lines of the guys he's coaching. Uh, but I think the key with Wiggins is – he kind of got screwed, Pat, being the number one pick in the draft. So when you're the number, you know, when you're the number one pick in the draft, you're supposed to be all world, all world. And now he can be like the fourth, fifth best player. And now you factor in like, oh, he was the number one pick. But now he don't have to be one, two, three, or four. He can just be a really good role player. And the rest is history. And he's in a great situation. Because uh, he doesn't have to play great every night. And I will tell you, he plays some of the best defense oh. I've ever seen. Hey, he I mean, he, down he had night. Tatum. He had Tatum so flustered. I mean, he was – I mean, I had never seen a guy have 100 turnovers in a playoff, in a playoff run. Yeah, it's a record. That is Nobody crazy. Does. Yeah, it's a record. That's a record, Chuck. I mean, that, <laughs> hey, that's, listen, that's, hey, yeah. it's going to be a long time for that record broken, too. Nobody <laughs> can break that record. Uh, for those of us that might – what is an average for a series, you think? Like, 100 seems like a lot. Uh, that, that honestly seems like a lot. Well, you should not average more than two turnovers a game. Okay. And, like, on a bad night, you should have three. But to average that many, well, hey, anytime you set a bad record, Pat, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree completely. He's young, though, right? That's what everybody in Boston's saying. That team's young. They're going to be around each other for, they got each got, like, three years left. They've been together for a long time. What did they learn or could they have learned from last night? And do you have faith that the Celtics will be back with this core that they have? Well, uh... See, I heard you and your guys talking earlier. Yeah, he's big Boston guy, man. He's wearing yeah. baseball shit trying to move on. <laughs> yeah, but let me tell you something, though. You can't say to yourself, first of all, listen, they got a, they got a nice little nucleus, but going into next season, you're not going to pick them over Milwaukee with a healthy Middleton. Oh, no. You're not going to – hey, you're not going to pick them over Brooklyn. Oh, oh no. no. I mean, so there's two teams right there. I says – I'll take those two teams before I take Boston right now. I mean, um, so, but, and listen, we don't have any idea what Philly is going to do. Yeah, they got a really good team, but I'm not picking them over Milwaukee if Chris Middleton is healthy. And if, if Kyrie, you know, he's going to play in every game next year. And they're probably going to tweak that roster somewhat also. I mean, because right now they ain't got but a couple players. But I tell guys this all the time. This year gonna have nothing to do with next year. Yep. Zero. Yep. I was in the uh, I was in the Super Bowl my rookie year riding the coattails of all the great players. To, we were undefeated until we chose to lose, okay, in our 15th game. Literally chose to lose. Take Peyton out. Take all the starters out. We'll lose. We end up getting to the Super Bowl. We lose to Drew Brees and his dumb baby, okay? That whole thing happens. Two yeah. years later, Chuck, we almost went completely defeated. Okay, and I was a rookie my rookie year. Uh, obviously, I was a rookie my rookie year. I was a, it was my rookie year when we went to the Super Bowl, and I was in that locker room like, yeah, I know, but we'll be, we fucking we won every game, and then we'll be back next year. We got Peyton Manning. Not never. Not yeah. never, Chuck. Now, football is obviously much different than basketball, but there's so much shit that has to go your way to make a run in any sport, right? Well, first of all, you're 100% correct, and I, we talk about this all the time. Every year – no matter what sports you play, it's totally different. The notion that we got to the finals, I only got to the finals one time. And I remember talking to Allen Iverson one time. He got there one time. He says, man, I thought I was going to win like two or three championships. I said, yo, man, you don't win a lot of championships. It's hard to win championships. He said, I only got there one time. I said, dude, I only got there one time. Because every you said something very interesting and smart. Everything has to break for you. I mean, you think about this. 
I don't think the Celtics beat Milwaukee if Chris Middleton is healthy. Yeah. I don't think they beat them. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but I think most people would agree. If Chris Middleton is there, Boston does not beat Milwaukee. But the notion that just because they got to the finals this year, because there's going to be a lot of changes. Oh. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes. I mean, because te- teams have to understand, you know, you saw it with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. You know, it was really interesting. Everybody like, well, this is the first time in NFL history they brought the same team back, every player. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, I'm not sure that's a good idea because – you have to get better. You, If you don't win the championship, even if you win the championship, you have to get better because those teams who butt you kick last year, they're coming for you. But also, I think you have to bring in some fresh, hungry guys. You know, because once you win it, unless you have guys who, like, really, really hungry to win more and more and more, Tom, you're not going to win it. Tom. MJ, there's a couple yeah. dudes up there that have that uh, competitive stamina that are just like. But 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 Pat, if you go back and look at all those guys, they kept bringing in different guys yes. every year. Because when the Bulls won the first time, they got rid of Horace Grant. Then they brought in Dennis Rodman, and he was hungry. So you have to keep bringing in guys who are really really hungry. You can't keep the same team year after year. And I think it was interesting you said Chris Middleton with Milwaukee Celtics wouldn't have made it because you always think about having health on your team. Like, oh, I hope our team stays healthy. But it's also like, what if the team you're playing against is not at full strength at the time you're playing them? Like, that's a huge... You have to get so lucky to fucking win in sports. And I think that is why we should celebrate what happened last night. Were you impressed by the Golden State Warriors celebration? There were some big-time daps. Mm -hmm. There was good celebration. There was bottle popping. There was fuck Draymond chance Mm -hmm. in there. Did you enjoy the way Golden State celebrated last night, Chuck? Well, I think it was a little... It was interesting because watching... Say, I think the thing with Clay. And, Pat, uh, I don't know if you've ever had any major injuries. Like, and most major injuries only keep you out for a year. If you go two years without playing basketball, you're probably thinking to yourself, damn, I'm never going to play basketball again. Yeah. So I think Clay, one of the reasons he was emotional, like, he missed two years. He was the best two-way player in the NBA for, for, for five or six years. And then he had to go two years without playing no basketball. And you got to one, and clearly he's not the same player, but you at least still have to wonder, am I going to get back? Yeah. And I think, listen, I think the stress of what's going on behind the scenes and Steph Curry's personal life, I think that was one of the reasons he was so emotional. Huh. Uh, because, you know, I've known uh, Dell and his wife a long time, and they're both amazing people, and I wish them nothing but the best. But – I, from from Steph's standpoint, I think it's got to be difficult when everybody's writing articles about your mom and dad and you're trying to play basketball. I think that's one reason he, you know, he was crying and he was so emotional because the one thing that sucks about being in the limelight, people think you're not human. Yeah, they don't realize like, yo, man, I got crap going on in my damn life, just like everybody else. I just don't get to show it. I don't get to cry on TV. I don't get to whine about it. But I got stuff going on all the time behind the scenes, and I'm trying to play basketball. Yeah. So to me, I don't know this firsthand, but I think the reason Steph was crying is I think it it took a load off of his mind. Yeah, yeah. A lot of weight carrying around. And I think you talked about it with Clay there. You just talked about it with Steph about being humans. Hey, when you lay your head down on that pillow, right, like Clay probably had a lot of – I'm never because you feel isolated whenever you're rehabbing, especially with the COVID stuff. If you're not traveling, you're away from the team. People are writing you off on the internet, and you let your head down at night. There's probably some self doubt that gets in there, creeps in there. Same thing with Steph, with the amount of weight he had on his shoulder, especially with the Finals MVP shit. That's a very valid point that we never, yeah. really, you never ever and, talk and about. And let me tell you something: when you, I tell you, when you, when you're hurt on a team. And like I say, I never had a real, real serious injury. But when you when you're injured, you're not part of the team anymore. Yeah. In fact, you know that. Yeah. Like and when you play with guys, yo man, good to see you. I gotta go to practice. I gotta go travel. Yeah. And like you're kind of so isolated, and to go about that for two years with serious injuries, I mean, an ACL 
and an Achilles, that's oh. like it's the most as serious it can get. That's a combo there of fucking yeah. career enders right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we're all happy for Clay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Welcome Clay. back, Clay. You like Draymond? Love Draymond? Good on TV. He's uh, Whenever he gets on with you, he's obviously a polarizing figure. He's won another title, and I think he was saying last night, what are they going to say now? What are they going to say now? What do you think is next for Draymond? I saw all of Michigan State was there supporting him last mm -hmm. night. Yeah. Made me think, is Draymond done? But then he said, let's do it again. What do you think about Draymond and everything he's been able to accomplish and how he's viewed by folks, Chuck? Well, I think sometimes he get caught up in the noise and gets, like, Draymond is a very good player, a very, very good role player who's integral to what they're doing to be successful. But I think sometimes he's like, I want more credit. I'm not getting enough credit. Instead of him saying, you know what? I'm really lucky to play with Clay and Steph. Oh, God. Those two guys, yes. they got to do all the heavy lifting <laughs> most nights. Yeah. And I think sometimes instead of saying, man, I'm a very good player. I'm in a perfect situation. It'd be the same thing about Wiggins. You know, Wiggins was talking about he wanted to get paid. Man, if you're stupid enough to take a lot of money to go somewhere else and go back to being mediocre, you're crazy. Take less money, stay with Clay and Steph. You're going to have Washington, Kamiga, and Dre for the next few years. You're going to probably win some more championships. But I do. I think sometimes Dre gets caught up in, like, I'm a y'all ain't giving me. Yeah. <coughs> Mine Excuse too. He's saying y'all not giving me enough credit. I'm like Dre. Don't worry about that. Everybody know you're a good player, yeah. but you are in a perfect situation because if you were averaging ten six and six on another team, nobody would know you're alive. But it's a really good ten six and six when you're playing with those guys. Yeah. So, and I think that's when P he gets frustrated because uh, and so, but he's got to learn, man. He is a really intricate part of what they do and just be happy with that and be happy with team success. Yeah, I think you're saying, like, just, hey, just accept who you are, man. You're an intricate part of that. This is who you are. You'll be remembered a part of this dynasty for exactly who you are and what you do. Nobody will be able to talk about it without you. But you can't get mad that people aren't talking about you the same way they're talking about maybe a star who's the one or a two on yeah. another team, right? That's what you're basically and, saying? You know, I, I, you know like, uh, so you look at the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s when they had Emmett, Troy, and Michael Irvin, those guys, every guy who played with them who won those three Super Bowls are a really lucky dude. <laughs> <laughs> they are really lucky dude. They're important, important. They're very important, but like, oh, those three guys are doing all the heavy lifting. <laughs> and, and that does not mean we're not important. Yes. But I don't want the responsibility of what those guys have to do every single night. Yeah, absolutely. It's a different yeah. world up there. Yeah, that's like, hey, I was a punter, so I'm very much understanding. <laughs> hey, this is my role. Yeah. <laughs> all right, where you're going to go is you fucking go. All right, I hope you guys do great out there. I'm just going to keep everybody kind of lightly entertained while we do this. Um, Chuck, the boys have a couple questions for you here, and we can't thank you enough for your time. But before we get into it, U.S. Open, hey, hey, it is, it's going right now. That course seems to be obviously a USGA course beating some guys up. We got like an NWO situation happening with the live golfers over there. You watching? What are your thoughts on it all, Chuck? Hey, cannot wait. I, I've actually, as soon as I'm done with you, I got to shoot a Subway commercial. Oh, thank you for doing this. Yeah, yeah. And then let me tell you something. I'm just going to get drunk and watch golf all day today, Woo! all day Saturday, all day Saturday. And let oh, me yeah. tell you something, Pat. I'm praying for chaos. <laughs> DJ. Hey, hey, I want the live guys on top of the leaderboard. I want complete chaos this weekend. <laughs> Dustin, hey, my, my I'm Dustin. telling you, I'm going to get drunk. After I, I got to do two hours of voiceovers for Subway, and then I'm going to come home. I'm going to start out with beer early. Why? Why? I, you know what? I just got pissed. Because I realized the hockey game is not till tomorrow night. No, that's good. That gives you something to continue to drink through. Yeah. No, no but I, I thought I'd made up my mind. I said, I'm just going to chill tonight and oh. watch the Stanley Cup finals. Oh, okay. And I was like, they're like, damn, the game is not till tomorrow night. So, okay. But I'm praying for chaos, Pat. <laughs> you said I, I, listen, I want all the, I want all the live guys on top of the leaderboard. 
I want to see the PGA Tour shaking in their damn boots. Oh. And, and I mean, I, it, I, listen, I'm not a religious dude, but I want chaos <laughs> at the U.S. Open. All right, I think we all do. It would be awesome. Dustin Johnson might be the only one that can go right now with where he's sitting. Phil had a rough day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Who knows how all the other guys. But could you imagine Rory already taking shots, right? And, like, Justin Thomas and them are taking their shots. And Dustin Johnson in there. And there's promos happening. Oh, and the oh. commentators, by the way, they, we know what side they're on. We know what yes. side the commentators yeah. are on. Phil missed, a, Phil missed, like, his third tap-in yesterday. And the, the clip ended with the commentators are saying Phil's made his bed. <laughs> that's like that's a uh, that's like it's a real. There's chaos on the way. I think Chuck. I honestly. Well, don't. listen. Uh, you're right. I, I I think I looked at the board. Dustin's the only one in contention. I would love to see Dustin against Rory and Justin Thomas because man, that would be so awesome for TV. Because uh, like I say, I don't judge other people. Listen. If somebody gave me two hundred million dollars, I'd kill a relative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Hey. I'm not sure we can do anything else after that. I don't know what the next question would be, uh, but uh. we appreciate the hell out of you, Chuck. Hey, I'm serious. Hey, they said uh, Phil Mitchell got two hundred million dollars, and Dustin Johnson got one hundred fifty million dollars. Hey. For $150 million, I kill a relative, even one I like. <laughs> hey, I think that's just signing bonuses, by the way. I yeah. think there is. Yeah. I think it's, uh, anyways, your golf game's getting there. You yeah. might be getting the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's been knighted, a man who is, uh, entered, how many years on TV, Chuck? 21. Man, thank you. You know, why don't you drink tonight and your career should have a drink tonight yeah. and watch them golf and enjoy life. We'll see you at Tahoe. You're the man, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Barkley. Thank you. Hey, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, you guys have a great weekend. Hey, you too, Chuck.